today, we're going to make a custom header for our website without Elementor Pro. We are going to be using the free version of Elementor and we're going to be using a plugin called Pro Elements. There are a couple of things that Pro Elements doesn't have versus Elementor Pro, but none of that is going to impact us making our own custom header in this video. If you don't have Pro Elements, there's going to be a link above in this video over here, as well as a link in the description that'll take you to a different video of mine to show you how to download it and how to install it. So once you have Pro Elements, then you can follow along in this video. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so here in the back end of our WordPress website, we're just going to make sure quickly that we have Elementor and Pro Elements installed. So we go to plugins. Here in our installed plugins, you can see we have Elementor and we have Pro Elements enabled. So the process of making a custom header for our website is pretty much the same as if we had Elementor Pro. So in order to do that, we go to templates and we go to the theme builder. So here in the theme builder, we're going to go to the header and we're going to click the plus sign. So here you can see that it's presenting the library from Elementor. Now just remember that this is Pro Elements and not Elementor Pro. So these pre-designed Pro features are not going to be able to be accessible from your website. You have to have Elementor Pro in order to use these. So we're just going to close this window because we are going to make ours from scratch. So the first thing before we start designing is we're going to go to this bottom left hand corner and we're going to click on settings. Here it's going to give the settings for our header. I'm going to give this a custom name before I carry on and actually designing this header. So the title of this, I'm going to call this my header. Then while I'm here, I'm going to change the HTML tag. I'm going to change it from div and I'm going to call this header. Now that we have these settings in place, now it's time to start creating our header. And the first thing we're going to be adding to the header is the container that's going to house the widgets. So to do that, we're going to click on this plus sign over here. And I'm going to choose the container that is going horizontally because that's the type of navigation header that I want. So I'm going to click on that now. And now you can see that the horizontal container has been added. So now we're going to change a couple of settings here in the container before we add any widgets to it. If you don't have the container settings here on the left hand side, all you have to do is click on the six dot icon and it'll definitely open up over here for you to edit any settings. The first thing I'm going to change is the content width. I don't want it box. I want it full width because I want it to go across the entire website. I'm going to make sure the default width is 100%. So if there's nothing there and it's got that gray 100 over there, that's perfect. If for whatever reason it's sitting at say 43 or whatever, any other number and just make sure that it is 100% unless you want your design to reflect that width. The min height that I'm going to go with here is say 55 pixels. You can make yours whatever you'd like. I normally like a nice thinner header to my website. I'm going to make sure that the direction is going horizontally from the left to the right. I'm going to leave this justified content there, but I am going to change the aligned items. I want everything to be center aligned vertically. So I'm going to click on that. So for the gaps, I'm going to take all the gaps out. I normally like to space all the widgets themselves because the site logo is a lot thicker than the items of a navigation menu. So I like to control all the different spacings to the widgets themselves and not the general container to the header. So here I'm going to put this as zero and now we can start adding the elements to our navigation header. So the ones we generally use is the site logo and the navigation menu itself. So in order to add these, the first thing I'm going to do is going to click on this nine dot icon up over here. And now you can see all the widgets here on the left hand side. The first one I'm going to do is I'm going to add the site logo. I'm going to drag that and let go inside the container. As you can see, my site logo is very large. And I don't want it this size for the navigation menu. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this image resolution. And I'm first going to make it a smaller size. And then I'm going to customize it to the actual header itself. So here in image resolution, I'm going to have a medium, which is a 3 by 3 If yours doesn't look right there, then just adjust accordingly. You do even have the custom option over here to actually render out an exact height. But for me in this example, I'm going to choose a medium. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the style and on the height itself, I'm going to make sure it's pixels. And I'm going to say that I want this as a 50 pixel height. Now that I'm happy with these settings, I am going to be coming back to this later on after added navigation for more positioning and stylizing. For now, this is good enough. And now I'm going to add the navigation menu. So in order to do that, I'm going to click on this nine dot icon again. In the search widget, I'm just going to type out menu. And here you can see in the search results, here's the WordPress menu. This is the default one. It's not the greatest, but it works pretty well. If you have any other plugins that has widgets, then do try out their menus and see if that's a better fit for you. But here in this example, I'm just going to be using this one here. So this WordPress menu, I'm going to click and drag and I'm going to put it next to the site logo. Okay, so now that I have the menu widget here, if yours hasn't defaulted to any menu that you've created, then just come and select the menu that you've saved earlier and then you can just click on that. The layout, I'm going to keep it as horizontal. You do have different options over there. Then the alignment, I'm going to keep it as a center line. It's just a personal preference for me. And everything else I'm pretty happy with over there. In the style, I am going to change a few things here. The typography I'm going to leave because I think the size and everything is fine. But the text color, I am going to put this white. I'm going to be making this design actually darker. So 
what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the text color. I'm going to be putting it to white. And then in the drop down section down over here, I'm going to make sure the text is white as well. I'm going to make sure the background is transparent because I don't want it to interfere with the actual background of the container. So now that I'm happy with that, I can go down to the toggle button. I'm going to do the same thing here as well. The color, I'm going to set it to white. And then the background color, I'm going to set it to transparent so it doesn't interfere with the actual container. Now that I have all these elements in place, it's time for us to start designing the whole look and feel of our navigation header. So I'm going to start with the actual container itself. I'm going to click on the six dot icon and here's all the settings that comes back. I'm going to click on the style section here. Now in the background color, it's good to have a background color. So even if you're keeping your text as a dark color and you're going to keep the background white, make sure that you select that the background color is white. Because if it's a sticky header and it starts scrolling down, any text that you have in your web page is going to show through the header itself. So you want it to actually have a color to keep that separation and to keep everything neat. So for me, I'm actually going to make this as a gradient. So to make a gradient, I'm going to click on the gradient itself. And on the very first color, I'm going to choose this as a dark gray. And then on the second color, I'm going to make this as a black. And then the type, I'm going to change this to radial. And you can see it does that nice little effect there just to add a bit more professionalism to it. Then I'm going to go down to the border. And here I'm going to give a box shadow. So as it's scrolling down the web page, there's going to be a bit of a shadow just to give it a bit more separation away from the page. So here I'm going to click on box shadow. I'm going to make the color as a black 75% roundabout. I'm going to make the blur say about a 15. Now you can see underneath it's just giving a little bit of a shadow just to do a bit of separation. So now that I'm happy with the shadow, it's time to actually make this header sticky. So now I'm going to go to advanced. I'm going to go down to motion effects. And as you can see here, there's a sticky option. And I want this to stick to the top as you're scrolling down and up the page. Another thing we can add here is an entrance animation. I love entrance animations. I'm going to put mine as a fade in down. So every time you load up a page, the menu just slides into place. It's a nice little effect that I just love putting in. So now that I'm happy with the actual container, so let's go and push this navigation to the right hand side because I don't want it right next to the logo. And the cool thing with containers is there's this new feature called grow. But to find that, I'm going to go into the site logo. I'm going to click on the pencil there. It's going to open up the settings. So in advanced, you'll see that here's an option of size. Now that size affects the actual container of the logo and not the logo itself. So I'm going to click on grow. So what it does, it takes all the space available within that row without making anything collapse underneath, which is really cool. So like say, for example, I had two navigations here just to fill out space you can see that the grow is only allowing it to take up that space because that's all that's available. So now if I take this out again, you can see that that grow feature comes back and takes more of the space that's all available. The thing is, I don't want the logo right in the middle there. You can if it's a good fit for you, but I want it more to the left hand side. So I'm going to click on the pencil again and then under style, I'm going to left align it. Now you can see it goes on the left hand side. But say it's a little bit too much to the left and you want to adjust it just slightly, just a little bit to the right hand side, just to give it a bit more space. In order to do that, we're going to go into advanced. I'm going to uncheck the link and on the left hand option, I'm going to say this is a 20 pixel so that you can see that this moves it just a little bit away from the left edge. Okay, so now that I'm happy with the layout of desktop, time to check the layout of the mobile. So to do that, we come down to the responsive mode button, we click on that and this menu on top appears. I'm going to click on mobile and now you can see here's the mobile version of how it's going to look like. Now right away, you can see that both things have stacked underneath each other. Now I don't want that, I want them to be next to each other. So to fix that, what I'm going to first do is I'm going to click on the logo. I'm going to click on the pencil there. And in advanced, I'm going to change the width here. So this is going to affect just the width setting in mobile. So from default, I'm going to make this as a custom. I'm going to make sure that it's a percentage. And I'm going to say that this is 49%. So I only want it to take up 49% of the space there. Now you can see nothing really happened because the grow is enabled there. But it doesn't really make a difference. You can take out grow here but I'm just going to leave it because everything else will work out anyways. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the menu. I'm going to hover over it. I'm going to click on the pencil icon there and I'm going to go into the same place. I'm going to go to advanced and to the width. I'm going to say it's custom and I'm going to change it as a percentage. And I'm going to say, say this is going to be a 30%. So if that doesn't look right completely to you, I can make the width a bit bigger or smaller and it'll realign everything as you need it. I think a 30 is fine for me here because it makes the logo look just right. Okay, so now that I'm happy with the whole look and feel of my header, it's time to publish it. So in order to do that, we're going to click down over here on publish and this whole window appears. So this is where you put the display conditions of when and where you want this header to be displayed. You can have the option of just putting it to the whole site, which is the very first option you get. So if you say add condition, it'll say include on the entire site. 
but there can be situations for whatever reason that on certain pages or maybe blog posts or anything you don't want the menu to be displayed so in order to do that we can add an extra condition and say exclude and on a singular and then you have you have the options of what you want to exclude so i can say i want to exclude on a certain page and instead of all i want it only on one certain page called test and on that page every time it loads up this menu will not appear but everywhere else on the website because it says include entire site it'll show there so once we're happy with all these settings all we have to say is save and close and there we go your header has been successfully published on your website so let's go look at it in the front end so here in the front end there's our header so as you can see as we scroll it's sticky to the top and as you can see that shadows are separating just ever so slightly away from the rest of the web page and you can see how this gradient actually works quite nicely on this website just to add a bit more separation and every time we reload the web page you can see that the header does that animation coming in let's do that now and there we go and there we go that is how to make a custom header without elementor pro and as you saw it's pretty much the same way as using elementor pro and that's the really cool thing about using the free plugin of pro elements if you have any questions then just drop a comment down below and let me see how i can help you don't forget to like and subscribe because that stuff helps me a lot and i'll see you in the next one cheers